Hey everyone, I thought I'd show you uh, how I weld aluminum. So today I'm gonna try welding these cans together as a bit of a challenge, and I'll probably mess up terribly on camera, but I have done this before uh, successfully. So let me show you first how I set up the torch. So here's the torch setup that I like to use. Uh, it's a large gas lens, and I know some of you are thinking, oh, that's ridiculous, you don't need that but I'll show you why I particularly like this in a minute. Uh, it's mostly just to hang on to it because I, I hold the torch very close to the tip. And I also do stainless steel welding and I always had problems with the stainless steel oxidizing and these large gas lenses really help. So I just leave it on the torch all the time. So it's set up with a, uh, a little adapter and so I'll put in the collet first and then screw in the gas lens. I also like using um, really thick electrodes. This is a 332nd rare earth electrode. I think it's a blend. I got this from ArcZone or something, and they just call it a rare earth blend or something like that. So I'll put that on, and this is a, uh, it doesn't even have the size on there, but you can see it's pretty big. It's like a three quarter inch large gas lens there. This all fits together. And one of the other nice things about these large gas lenses is that um, the electrodes stick out can be quite far because this is going to make a nice huge cone of, ga of gas out here. And uh, you can get this thing way out there, almost like that even. So if you're welding into a corner, this is how I hold the torch, by the way, too. I'll show you in a minute. But I, I grab it right here. And uh, if you're welding into a, a corner, you can really get that electrode sticking out far, and it's easy to see what's going on. Okay, so uh, let's uh, check out the machine setup. Okay, the machine is a, uh, a really low-cost 200-amp AC-DC inverter machine, and I got this off of eBay a while back and picked it up locally uh, from a guy in San Mateo. I mean, it was a, a business, an importer. And I currently have it set up to do AC, uh, auto gas so that when I step on the pedal the gas will start. Uh, TIG welding, no pulse. I'll talk about the pulse later which actually turned out to be not nearly as useful as I thought. No downslope and upslope so as soon as I step on the pedal I get exactly the amount of current uh, relative to that pedal position. And um, the clean width area, this determines how, how uh, much of the cycle the electrode is positive versus negative. I usually keep this almost all the way over into the, uh, the weld as opposed to clean. So, and this machine only goes from about 20% to 80%, and I would almost prefer it to go even further. Uh, most of the metal that I weld is pretty clean and it really doesn't need much cleaning action. So I usually keep that one pretty far over. Uh, you can change the pulse frequency with this machine, but you can't change the, uh, the AC cycle, which I think is 60. So, this, this control doesn't do anything unless we're using the, um, the pulse feature. The arc force is also a silly setting. This is only good for uh, stick welding, but if you turn this knob up and you're TIG welding, the machine will behave strangely. It will actually put out too much current when you initiate the arc. And so always keep this down unless you're doing stick welding. I've got a pedal control there, and there's a knob on the back of the pedal which determines how much current you get when the pedal is floored. So confusingly, the knob on the front of the machine actually doesn't do anything when you're using the pedal. Uh, it's, I've tried turning it up and down, and it makes no, no difference. So when the pedal is plugged in, you set the maximum current with that knob that's on the front. And since I'm going to be welding aluminum cans, I really don't need that much current, so I've only set it to maybe 25% full scale. So when the pedal is floored, I'll have 50 amps, and uh, it'll taper down almost to zero, like a few amps, uh, when I just barely get on the pedal. I'm using pure argon, and uh, this is the stock regulator that came with that import welder, and it is just, uh, this part of it is just a pressure regulator, and I think it, it came with this flow regulator originally, and I added these two flow regulators through a manifold. And this is pretty helpful because a lot of times you want purge gas for the back of the weld. And then you also want purge gas for some other part of the work that might be heating up. Like if you're doing a T joint, uh, you want purge gas for the back of the T, the underside of the T, and then the weld gas from, from the part that you're actually welding. So it's been very useful to have three flow regulators. Uh, also keep in mind that this one is calibrated in uh, liters per minute, not cubic feet per hour. 
So I usually set this for about five to 10 liters per minute, which should be 10 to 20 cubic feet an hour. Double check that, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but we can test this by uh, pushing the gas test valve on the uh, welder. So the gas is flowing now, and uh, you can just verify that there's, there's the appropriate flow and use the knob to adjust it. I usually weld on my table saw table. It's heavy cast iron, and I've got the grounding clamp on the far side there. And for something like this that's low current, um, you know, just having the parts lay on the table is good enough. I guess if I were doing really high current welding, I would um, make a better effort to ground the parts specifically. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is tack those cans together. Oh, first let me show you the prep. So to prep aluminum parts, I've got a stainless steel brush that's only for aluminum. I don't use this on anything other than uh, cleaning aluminum prior to welding. So what I'm gonna do is scratch these up really well to make sure there's no oxide coating. And these cans probably have another, you know, lacquer or weird coating or something on there. Do that. And then I do not use acetone or paper towels anymore because after scratching this up, if you get in there with a paper towel and acetone, there's a good chance you'll leave fragments of paper towel in there. And those will create a problem for the weld. So just scratch it up really well and, and call it. And uh, sometimes if I'm feeling really picky, I'll clean the rod with, with a, a wipe of acetone since this is smooth and it won't catch particles of paper towel. Um, it's not, I, don't, I don't think it's that critical. Okay, I think I fixed the machine finally. Uh, it's been a day or two since I started this video. Uh, the first problem was that this riser card here um, sticking off the board had a bad solder joint typical in, in cheap electronics. The, they just put too much weight on that solder joint and it eventually broke free. But as with all good problems, this one was compound. So in addition to that, uh, this machine has a spark gap. I know it's hard to see inside there. And when I step on the pedal, the spark gap lights up. Oh, sorry, you're not going to be able to see that. There it is. And that spark gap had become too large, so instead of a nice uh, high audio frequency or, or, you know, some tens of kilohertz or something, I was only getting a spark every, you know, a few times a second or something, so the torch wouldn't light. So I got it all straightened out, and I'm going to give the cans another shot. So here we go. Okay, so I've got the cans uh, set up on my welding table, and uh, first I'm just going to describe what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to change the camera shutter, so hopefully you'll be able to see this uh, with the arc going. So one thing to keep in mind with TIG welding is that the direction of the torch uh, has a very big impact on where the heat is going to go. So I'm going to start by tacking these cans together, and uh, the way to do that is to initiate a puddle on one can. So I want the torch to be aiming pretty much at one can first, and I'm going to get it really close, get the electrode as close as possible to the base metal, and as soon as the aluminum turns shiny, that is when that you, want, you want to add filler rod. So I'll describe this as I'm welding and it will make a little bit more sense, but if I wanted to actually weld these cans after I've already got a tack weld in place, I would want the torch pretty even, aiming like this, so that the heat is distributed right on the joint. Uh, but to get started, if I, if I had the torch aimed like this, uh, it would be very difficult to get a tack started because the arc would kind of wander around in the crack down there. And for welding something as thin as these cans, uh, that's going to be a problem. Uh, another little hint, when doing low power welding, using thin rod is quite helpful. If I had a really fat fill rod like this, eighth inch, uh, look, look at how difficult it is to get the rod into the puddle. So this electrode needs to stay close to the surface in order to get a tight arc and control where the current is going. And so if I'm welding like this, as soon as the, as soon as the base metal starts to liquefy, it's very difficult to physically get the weld rod into the puddle because it's just so big. So using a thinner rod, you can sort of sneak into the, into the puddle and keep the electrode close. Probably the biggest trick with TIG welding is just keeping the electrode as close as possible to the work without actually dipping in. If you dip in and you're doing a good weld, I mean, you really care about the weld, you really have to regrind the tungsten. 
Uh, all the books say it, and they're actually right on this case. If you have a contaminated tungsten, you're almost guaranteed to spoil the weld. Um, if you're just hacking, you know, steel together and you don't care, maybe it won't matter. Uh, but regrinding, you know, especially for aluminum, regrinding really is necessary. Okay, so I'm going to put on some gloves and try this weld. I should add the, uh, the, the, I'm shooting this with a really bright light uh, over the top of the weld table. Uh, the idea being that you'll be able to see the base metal and the arc almost at the same time. Uh, I don't know how well that's exactly working out because I can't keep track of the camera and keep track of all this welding stuff at the same time. So we'll see how that goes. Try the same thing here just about. Turns shiny, put a little bit of the rod in. Now I'm going to redirect the torch so that it's aiming at the other can. Base metal turns shiny, put in some rod. Get the rod stuck on that one. Put some of the both drops. A little bit more heat. Let it back up. So, so far so good. We'll do uh, three or four tacks. And um, that way, if I do four tacks, I'll always have three solid ones when I'm uh, finishing the weld and going all the way around. Same deal. Start with the can towards me. Turn the torch towards the other can. Oops, that was a touch. And you can see what happened. See, I just spoiled myself. So, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. The tip of the tungsten is covered with aluminum. That's what I get for, for, dipping the tung for dipping the tungsten. So I'm going to regrind that, wire brush the base metal, and try to fix it. Okay, so we got the tack welds in, and uh, now I'm going to uh, stitch weld it, meaning I'm going to weld from here, maybe halfway between these tacks, and then weld from the next tack, rotate the cans, and, and rotate from the next tack halfway to the next tack, and go sort of halfway around. So what's, what that does is it spreads out the heat. So if I tried to weld from here to here in one pass, uh, there's a good chance that so much heat would accumulate in this area that we would have a problem with, with the cans overheating. And I don't know, maybe I'll try it and kind of see how it's going as I'm going along. Uh, but another trick is that after putting in the tacks, there's a little bit of um, oxidation and junk that kind of accumulated from starting and stopping the arc when there wasn't shield gas present. So I like to give it another little brush with the uh, stainless steel brush to make sure that we're as clean as possible. 